Okay, so now I actually want to look at real, honest to goodness, radical equations. So let's take a look at one right now. Suppose I wanted to solve the following. x equals the square root of 15 minus 2x. Now what makes this a radical equation is that there's a square root here. Okay, now how would I solve this? Well, to get rid of a square root, one way to do that is to square both sides. Now I have to square both sides, even though the square root's only on this side, because of course if I just square this side and do nothing here, that's going to change the equality. It will no longer be equal. It won't be the same equality. So to keep everything balanced perfectly, if I square one side, I also square the other side. So of course, here I'm now going to have an x squared once I square the whole thing. But that's a small price to pay for lifting that whole radical. So this looks good. OK, so what do I do? If I square both sides, I would see on this side x squared. And on this side, if I square a square root, the radical just lifts up, goes away. They cancel each other. So I'm just left with the inside, which would be 15 minus 2x. OK, great. Well, now you'll notice that, OK, there's a, now we have squares in it before we didn't have any squares in it. But the happy thing is there are no more square roots. And let's face it, if you had a choice between facing a square or a square root in a dark alley, you always go for the square. So we got rid of the square root, and now we can just solve this. Well, how would you solve this? Well, this is just now a quadratic equation. So what do I do? I push everything over to one side, in my case, my left, and have everything equal 0, and then try to factor and solve. So let's try that technique right now. So if I bring everything over, what's going to happen? Well, this minus 2x would be brought over as a plus 2x. So I would see x squared, and then I have a plus 2x. And then this 15 would be brought over as a negative 15. Now let me say a little teeny thing here. Sometimes when students are working through these problems, they're getting so involved and so forth, as you can see. Sometimes they just start to work and factor this thing. Don't do that. We're dealing with an equation. So always remember to write equals and then whatever's on the other side. In this case, since I brought everything over, subtracted everything over, added everything over, I'm just left with a 0 here. That way it's always clear where you are. I want to solve this equation. OK, well, now there's only one game in town. Let's hope this can factor. And let's see what happens. Well, I'll put an x here x here. Negative tells me that I'm going to have opposite signs. Since these are the same, I can put those signs wherever I want. I'll put a plus and a minus here. And I need two numbers that multiply to give 15, but then subtract somehow to give uh, 2. So let's see. 3 and 5 sound pretty good. Should I put uh, 3 and 5 here? If I put the, the big number 5 with the negative sign, when I combine them, I'll get a negative 2. So probably a bad idea. I better put the 5 here and the 3 here. Notice the inside term is 5x, the outside term is minus 3x, the net gain is a plus 2x, and the last times the last is a minus 15. Again, I'm, I'm factoring really fast, and I hope that, that as you practice these things, you'll be able to factor fast too. But even more important than factoring fast is to factor, factor accurately. So after you factor, just take a second to check and make sure that everything's looking OK. Anyway, uh, this looks good to me, and I've got a product of two things that multiply to give 0. So either this thing is 0 or that thing is 0. So either x plus 5 equals 0. That's one possibility. Or the other is that x minus 3 equals 0. Well, solving this is easy. That means that x equals negative 5. And solving this is pretty easy. x equals 3. So there are two solutions to this quadratic. However, the mission was not to solve the quadratic. The mission originally was to solve this radical equation. So what I have to do now is check and make sure that, in fact, both of these things are solutions. Let's check the easy one first, the smaller number, 3. So let's plug in 3 here and see what happens. If I plug in 3 for x, what I'm going to do is, wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in 3. And I'm going to see if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So let's do that right now. In fact, I'll just do it right on top of this. And I'll even use a different, a different color. I'll use my check color here. I don't mean like Czechoslovakia, but check as in Checks and balances. OK, so if I put in an x equals 3 everywhere, on this side I would have a 3. And the question is, does that equal, I don't know, I'm going to check, does that equal when I put in a 3 on this side? Well, if I put in a 3 on this side, I see 15 minus, and if I put in a 3 here, I'd see 2 times 3, which is 6. So this side here would equal the square root of 9. And you'll notice the square root of 9 equals 3. And so I see that 3, the right-hand side, does equal 3, the left-hand side. So in fact, this checks. So this is really one answer. 
What about the minus 5? Well, let's try that. So let's check the minus 5. If I plug in minus 5 for x, I see minus 5 equals. And now I'm going to try and see what happens on the, on the, left hand, on the right hand side. But I'll tell you right now, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I know this is bad news. Because this square root is positive. If it were negative, there would have to be a negative sign in front of it. So already I know this is not going to work. But let's just keep going and seeing what value this equals. I have square root of 15 minus, and if I plug in a minus 5 here, a minus 5 here, that would give me a plus 10. So I would see a plus 10. And then this thing, and this is a question mark, is this equal? And this thing would equal the square root of 25. But the square root of 25 is 5. And you'll notice that 5 is not equal to minus 5. You see that? So in fact, this is an extraneous root. Even though it's a root to the quadratic, it's not a root to the original thing. So we cross that out, and the only answer is x equals 3. See the importance of checking your answers? OK, let's try one more. This one's going to be even a little bit more uh, eclectic, an eclectic one, because this one looks like this. x equals 3 plus square root of 3 minus x. OK, now let me tell you why this is eclectic. You're saying, gee, it looks like the exact same thing as the other one. Well, let's just think through this. You see a square root, so your initial reaction should be, Bink, I'm going to square both sides. OK, that's a great reaction. But let's just think through this together and reason together. When I square this side, this is actually a binomial. There are two terms here. So when I square that out, I'm going to actually have to do a little bit of foiling. And when I start foiling, there's going to be inside terms and outside terms. And notice that those inside terms and outside terms are going to have square roots in it. So actually, by squaring this side, I am not going to, in fact, clean off that radical. Because remember, if I have something, a and b, and I square that, I do not get a squared plus b squared. Right? This is the number one classic mistake, number one on my top 10 list, squaring the squaring mistake. Right? This is not true. Remember, don't forget to foil. So there's middle terms. There's inside terms and outside terms, and that's going to actually contribute more square roots. So the important thing to remember here is that when I see a square root equation, what I have to do is get all the square roots by themselves. I have to isolate it so there's no foiling. So if that 3 weren't there, then if I squared that, I would just lift the radical. So how do I get rid of the 3? I'll bring that 3 over to the other side. So what I'm going to do is bring the 3 over, and I see x minus 3 equals the square root of 3 minus x. And I want you to notice what, what just happened there. By bringing this over, now I've isolated the square root. So when I square both sides, this will just lift. The radical will go away. You see that? So now I'm going to square both sides. On the left, I see x minus 3 squared. And on the right, the squaring just lifts the radical. So I see 3 minus x. And now I'm re returning to a quadratic, which I can solve. Again, this is not just uh, x plus 9. Remember the number one, the number one mistake, classic mistake, is you have to FOIL out. If I FOIL this out, I'll see x squared. And then the inside term is minus 3x. The outside term is minus 3x. And so what I see is a minus 6x, and the last times the last would be a plus 9. I just foiled. I multiplied x minus 3 by itself in my head. OK? And this equals 3 minus x. What do I do? I see it's quadratic. I pull everything over to the left, set it equal to 0 on the right, and see what happens. If I move this uh, minus x over, it becomes a plus x, and I see x squared six, minus 6x six plus an x is a minus 5x. And then if I bring this 3 over, I have to subtract it. And so I see 9 minus 3, which is about plus 6, equals 0. So now I want to factor this and see what happens. Well, I'll put an x and an x. The positive sign here tells me they're the same sign. And this tells me they must both be negative. Two numbers that multiply to give 6 but combine to give 5, it looks like, uh, looks like what? Uh, 2 and 3. Right, minus 2x, minus 3x, combined to give minus 5x, and minus 2 to minus 3. Ping. Great. OK, so now what I want to do is uh, say, OK, here we have this product, and it equals, it equals 0. So what does that mean? It means that either this equals 0 or that equals 0. 
And so if this equals 0, that means that x minus 2 equals 0. Or the other possibility is that x minus 3 equals 0. OK, well, if x minus 2 equals 0, that means that x has to be 2. So in this case, we see that x would have to equal 2. So there's one solution. And what's the other solution? The other solution is if x minus 3 equals 0, which means that x would have to equal 3. So I get two solutions to the quadratic. But what about to the original question? Well, to the original question, what I have to do now is plug back and see. So let me actually do that. Let me lower this for you a little teeny bit here. So let's see. If I plug back and check, I have to see if these are going to work or not. Let's check the first one. Oh, I need to take my check font. So if I take my check font, I'm going to plug in a 2 here. If I plug in a 2, what happens? On the left-hand side, I see just 2. And the question is, does that equal, question mark, what I get when I plug in 2 on the right? So that would be 3 plus square root of, and I see a 3 minus 2. Well, what does that equal? That's 3 plus the square root, 3 minus 2 is 1. The square root of 1 is just 1. So this is 3 plus 1 which is 4. 4 equals 2? I, I don't think so. So in fact, this is false. So in fact, this is an extraneous root. It's a root to the quadratic, but not a root to the original answer. By checking, I saw that, in fact, this is not a root. Now, maybe, in fact, the other one's not a root, too. You know, just because you get one thing not to work doesn't mean the other one automatically works. Maybe this thing has no solutions. Always have to check. So let's plug 3 in here. 3 on the left for x would be 3. Does that equal, question mark, 3 plus square root of 3 minus 3. Well, 3 minus 3 is 0, so this is 3 plus 0. And notice that equals 3. Voila! 3 equals 3. Cha-ching! Checks. So in fact, there's one answer to this uh, radical equation, and that's the answer x equals 3. And as always, it's party time! OK, up next what I'll do is one more example of this where we'll have two square roots in the same problem. Oh my goodness, is there no stopping him? I'll see you there.